today is another edition of our life. I'm doing something very nice and interesting today. So we're going to be exploring into the deep culture of Qatar and the food and the cuisine. And I think the best people to do this are the people that actually knows what it takes when it comes to food and culture. Qatar. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. So I'll have him introduce himself to the house. Sir. So what's the name? Uh, my name is Mohammed Al Hamadi. Wow. I go by uh, Malik. Malik is like a grandfather name. But you know, whenever uh, you work in a workplace, especially mm. in Qatar, there are many Muhammads. That's so when good. you say Muhammad, uh, six Muhammads look back at you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So sometimes people tend to go with their father's name or grandfather's name. Uh, so this is where Malik comes from. Beautiful, mm. yeah. beautiful, nice. That's really good. So like, like, tell us about this whole thing you didn't care. Because people know about Qatar, the culture, the cuisine. It's very integral, very important. Honestly, so one of the reasons why we opened a business like this is, is actually what you, the problem statement you put. Yeah. What is the tradition of Qatar? Yes. Who are the Qataris? Yeah. And you know, we are a nation of 300 to 400,000 original Qataris. True. Which makes it uh, a bit uh, difficult for our food to be exported outside. Mm. So food migrates with the migration of people. And usually migration have reason, either war or political system or whatever exploration, you know. And this is how, why, uh, this explains why you have a Chinatown wherever you go in the world. True. With the Chinese restaurants, with that. Uh, that explains why the Indian influence, wherever you go, there is an Indian cuisine, very rich in Indian cuisine, wherever you go in the world. Uh, Lebanese, when it comes to the Arab, uh, region, you will find Lebanese food, the shawarma, the tabula, the hummus is, wow. is everywhere. Wow, that's so that's why it becomes like a challenge. Whenever I go and open a menu in the world, there is tiramisu. But there is nothing of my grandmother recipe over there, <laughs> nothing of my flavor over there. Uh, and we adapted to many flavors. Mm. So some people, when they come to us the first time, um, it depends where you come from. Um, if, if, if naturally the food or what the food where you come from um, is uh, uses natural ingredients not much of spice you might find the Qatari food uh, a surprise mm. you know mm. uh, but then if your food is already with flavor an element of spice aroma all of those elements that makes uh, uh, an aromatic dish then I think uh, the conversion uh, is easy Easier. it's easy <laughs> So yeah, this is why we, um, personally, I'm not a chef, um, I'm, I, I'm many things except a chef. Really would like to know this, <laughs> yeah. interested. So um, um, I, I studied as an engineer, this is what I, my, my academic background. Um, I worked in different fields of engineering, mechanical engineering, drilling engineering. Wow, interesting, <clears throat> interesting. Um, then, uh, you know, I grew up at the workplace, I worked in uh, many industries also, in aviation, uh, I, I worked in oil, the oil field. Um, I worked. I, I am working currently also in the banking sector. Um, I kind of discovered after ten years of being an engineer that my strength is in development, mm. whether it is product development or service development or uh, a business development, a human development, because the development has uh, principles. Mm. And once you build those principles right, you have a developed uh, system. system yeah. yeah. So, Qatar as a country, we have over 4,700 4, uh, brands of restaurants. Wow. And this is international, local, from the small chapati place until the um, Michelin stars you find in the hotels here in Doha. Um, but there is no cooking school. Mm. So, you get me that a school has two purposes. Uh, one purpose is to document, and the other purpose is to share, share. or publish. So, so, this kind of thing uh, puts a setting stone for if we want to be noticed on the map of culinary, then I think we need an establishment that uh, documents and that publishes. And the best way to do it is to do it with other people. True. So you have witnesses True. for every every single thing you've done and oh. the uh, and oh. the activities you do as you go. So this is this is basically what the cooking, uh, cooking academy, academy is about. 
um, and in, in modern way um, in the modern world it's not anymore I will uh, build a restaurant mm. okay you will build a restaurant you need a supplier for the ingredients you need a supplier for the um, paper bags and all of the branding elements uh, you need people you need uniform you need uh, so many things around just operating a small uh, restaurant so and here we also reached out to businesses uh, to cater for those services wow. like B2B wow. Wow. Uh, to give them solutions wow. uh, since they are in the market and we are in the market they are focusing on one thing I'm sure they can't focus on everything mm -hmm. else so this is where we come in handy with the, our business model that we can cater for the business from one side and then we can cater for the individuals that are looking for a, a cooking class uh, an experience Very whether brilliant. it's cultural or international Wow! so you guys are actually showcasing cuisine of Qatar today. we are no. so the okay. cuisine of Qatar is kind of let's say the backbone of what we introduce of courses in here wow. especially with the uh, um, I'm blessed I mean I don't know I'm biased with the topic because my mama is the main chef in here Okay. Uh, she's the national chef of Qatar, uh, chef Aisha Tamimi. Uh, she's done so many uh, international ventures in the world. Wow. And I think uh, she is the right name or the right face when, whenever you will talk about uh, Qatar culinary or the Qatari kitchen, then immediately she will be the reference of, uh, of the Qatari kitchen. Wow, you're in the right place exactly. <laughs> now, so how long has this sector been? How long has you guys been? Um, under the brand or the name of the Cooking Academy, this is our sixth year of establishment. But then, as in doing this nature of job, which is teaching or uh, developing menus or uh, uh, being in the food, uh, food and beverage sector, uh, I would call it as back as whenever my mama started in this business. Because she started to be, uh, she sold books at the beginning. You know, this is before the internet and before everything. That's cookbooks. Cooking books. She wow. she has nine nine different uh, cooking books uh, yeah. over the years. Um, she came out on TV for the past 22 years. Uh, so that makes her, you know, TV was a big thing back yeah, in the day, yeah, you know. I can imagine. Uh, and she has fame from all over. Uh, the regional, uh, she, she was hosted on a TV in Croatia. She was hosted in, uh, almost all over the world. Wow. Yeah. So... You guys are actually digging deep into the culture and how many students have you guys given out a certificate to? That's a good number in six years all together, adults and kids. And this is not only the um, Qatari um, certificates. Um, all, I'm speaking about all of the courses that or all of the people that were admitted. We are uh, just shy under 4,000 people. So there are at least 3,800 people that came in, whether it's a kid's experience or a adult experience or a mix of experiences. And this is now I'm speaking on the customer level, uh, like me, you wanting to have a, a different time uh, other than going to the movies or going to a mall. Uh, this is something we can do, which is, uh, what's the word? You get to network with other people. Exactly. You get exactly. to learn a little bit something new. You, you be in action, you know? And then you dine with uh, whoever came with you. So, so this is the kind of experience we offer in the Korean Academy. Yeah. So you guys, it's basically fixed on Qatari food or also no. Western food? It, it's extended to, to all, all, uh, all, 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 all chefs, all credible chefs uh, in Qatar. Um, when I say credible, it's either you are um, under a commercial kitchen and you are working and you have your certification. Uh, could be one way of uh, of being one of those chefs we admit but for us we want one more element uh, you get sometimes the type of people who are really good with their hands mm. but then their presenting skills or engagement skills are not high mm. so we like to focus on the other group because this is kind of a it's a gathering place so the more shared the better yeah. So we try to focus on the characters uh, that, we, uh, that we work with, that they are fun, they bring energy to the room, and they, they have stories to share about whatever dish. Uh, they are well researched, they are well cultured, and um, in, in the presentation they will do uh, in the cooking classes. Wow. But then when we speak about uh, Qatari food uh, strictly, let's say, 
Many stories are associated uh, with food. Many, many old chants and songs are associated with food. Um, food is the center of, uh, of all uh, social events. True, true. Um, and even in, in some poetry, uh, old poetry, uh, people would uh, kind of have a truce time in war. And they would dine all together, they put the swords and the shields outside and they would dine together all together. Yeah. Maybe they can get to a deal in the middle and stop the war. Yeah. So uh, food always plays this, uh, uh, it's a very unique, unique need for a human being. True. And yeah. then put around it, uh, if you were, let's say, in an industrial country, with the culture of that industrial country, you'll find machines, tools and uh, mm. things that aid it. Uh, if you are more of a, a preserved country, then the old ways of doing things are still there and you mm. can touch the virginity of things, you know. Mm. So it depends where, where you are, you get a different exposure mm. or understanding about food. Perfect, perfect. Now, people watching from Eastern Europe and all over the world would yeah. like to know how to reach you guys. And you guys welcome people from outside to come study here? Yeah. Really? So, I mean, the offer is open. Uh, uh, mainly we get people from our neighbors, from Kuwait and Saudi Arabia. Perfect. They say that these, these are the people because mm. they can drive. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, and uh, the online abilities are going to be launched in 2024. So Excellent. they can, they can do uh, the studies online. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so this is, let's say, the combination of trying just to be a cooking school, I think, with, you know, everything that uh, we, we came through, like the old dial phone in the houses that is connected to a line. That's no more. It true, became true. the mobile phone. True. No one is faxing anymore. True. Everyone is emailing. True. So this is Sorry, just, uh, it, an, yeah. it, it's just happening. Yeah? Yeah. And food is one of those topics uh, or the education of food. And uh, I always classify ourselves as a, an edutainment company. So it's yeah. not education and it's not entertainment. Yeah. We are edutainment and this is where you get the authentic knowledge you want to get about an Italian dish mm -hmm. with the proper way of doing it. And then you have the luxury of fusing it with any other culture, which is a total new line that is all of this Peruvian Japanese food. Uh, you get the uh, African with I don't know what twist, you know? So these twisted uh, concepts, I think looking at how the trend is moving, this could be the new norm of food. New norm of food, that's true. Because people out there really don't know much about the Middle East food. Mm -hmm. And it's, I believe it's a rich, it's a that needs to be sold out there. So, um, in two, three words, I'd like you to just explore where and where can we meet you guys. You already spoke about your online presence coming up very soon, and um, I'll be meeting with your mom. Yes, Chef Aisha. Saturday, exactly, yeah. and it's going to be a very, very interesting time. And today, we're going to explore into a bit of his cooking skills as a manager here, yeah. he manage this place. Yes. Right, and he does a lot of things. So, just tell them in your own language, in English and in English. Arabic language. What am I to say? <laughs> Tell them, like, come around. Okay. Come and experience the beauty of Qatar with us. And um, I, at least you would get the best and know more about it. Uh, you want me to say that in Arabic, right? In Arabic and in, and in English. <laughs> in English. <laughs> okay. okay. Very nice. I would say uh, usually people uh, are afraid of what they don't know. True. Um, and True. sometimes True. they don't try it because they don't know it. True. But then I think with whatever Qatar have demonstrated on the charts, being one of the safest places in the world, True. being one of the most attractive for businesses True. and the World Cup and so many projects are happening yeah. Yeah. Uh, in Qatar, I think it's worth a visit. Is number one, just True. Qatar for Qatar. True. But then if you had this one thing for food, if you own a restaurant or uh, you're a foodie one way or another, then I think passing by Doha and reaching out to the cooking academy might enable you uh, to see different things and maybe achieve in new things. I always believe maybe I, I personally will not be the, re the, the main reason for exporting the Qatari food outside, but at least if I became a platform and then mm. one smart person in yeah. the world yeah. does the right magic in the right time, True. then everything will happen. And in Arabic, I will tell you, Erhabu. 
مرحبا مرحبا انت حياكم من قطر نعم ليلى بي فاطمه مرحبا حياكم 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 في قطر في حقك كم كم يلا كم يلا ثانك يو فيري ماتش كيب واتشينج